manifest of the, the year. It, it was vacant, but it had parking for 80,000 people. It had land that could accommodate probably 100,000 people, and he got the rights to use it as a flea market, a bazaar, for no money down, but for paying the owner of the sports arena a share of the revenue. Once he had that agreement, he went to a professional company that was the national leader in doing flea markets and doing bazaars. They knew how to set them up. They already had hundreds of vendors. They just didn't have good locations in Los Angeles. He had tied up and had a long-term contract with one of the prime and most desirable locations in all of Los Angeles. He didn't know anything about being a flea market operator. He didn't know anything about selling booths. He knew nothing about anything, getting regulations, but he had control of the location. So he went to the big company that was the largest in the nation and he made a deal where they agreed to run the bazaars and pay him a percentage that was double the amount he paid to the landowner. He made millions of dollars just by being smart enough to tie up the land. There's another company, very smart. They go around and they find uh, designers or athletes who used to be very, very, very popular, but are not as popular anymore, but still have a respectful following. They get the rights to their name, and then they license those rights to other companies for products, for services, and they get a royalty, and they split that royalty with the celebrity or with the designer. I had another friend, and this was brilliant. He would go to companies that did everything from sheets and pillowcases to containers that you would have in your kitchen for holding rice or flour to uh, uh, plates and uh, cups. And he would offer to create designs for those companies and his proposal was test the designs I create for you against the the products you have with no designs if the ones with designs sell a lot more give me five percent of the sales and he was very good at creating designs that made a bland white plate now a very beautifully designed plate or a white sheet, now a beautifully designed sheet, and sometimes it would double the sales and he would make millions of dollars. Another man wanted wanted to drive Porsche automobiles all his life, but he could never afford one. He found out a Porsche auto dealer was for sale in a smaller city, but he couldn't afford the $1 million down payment. Instead of seeing that as a problem, he realized there was another opportunity. In the United States, car dealers can allow people to drive what they call demonstrators, meaning you can take a brand new car and for three months maximum, somebody can drive it and it's still considered a new car. It uses special plates and it's not registered as sold and it goes back to the dealership. This young man who wanted to buy a dealership did not have the $1 million down payment. But he knew there must be a lot of other sports, excuse me, Porsche sports car enthusiasts who really wanted to drive Porsches and didn't have the money to keep buying new ones. So he ran an ad in the paper. The ad said, I can give you a brand new Porsche to drive every year for the rest of your life. And instead of spending $100,000 every year for a new one, pay one time $75,000 and you'll never pay another penny again. And he got 200 people to respond. 
And what he did, he said, if you give me the $75,000, I will use your money together to buy a Porsche dealership. As a Porsche dealer, I can allow you to drive a demo for three months every year for free. You take, you, I'll take it back and give you another one, and we'll keep doing that. He used that simple philosophy, hopefully it makes sense, and he raised $3 million, bought the dealership, got a million and a half dollars extra as a bonus, never had to pay a penny in, in um, interest to the banks because it wasn't a loan, never had to pay a penny to any partners because it wasn't a partnership. They just got to use a Porsche every year. I had another friend, and this was incredible. They, in fact, this is a great story. In the United States, one of the most successful cruise lines, boat cruises, is called Carnival Cruise. When Carnival Cruise first started out, they didn't have any money. The owner was able to get control on a, on a lease. He didn't have to pay any money of an old, uh, ugly cruise ship that had been uh, in bad repair. It still worked, but it looked ugly. The owner didn't have a lot of money. He could only afford to paint one side of the cruise ship, which meant whenever he came in to a port, he had to come in on the pretty side because the other side was ugly and rusted. It had 400 rooms, but he rarely sold more than 100, meaning he had 300 rooms that were unsold every time he went out on a cruise. His rate at the time was $1,000 a cruise for a room. That meant every time he went out every week on a cruise, 300 rooms worth $1,000 a piece were unused. That also meant that he had $300,000 a week in potential buying power he was not using. He got the idea of trading, of exchanging the unused 300 rooms every week to magazines and newspapers and television stations and websites for advertising. He would get the equivalent. If 10 rooms would uh, sell for $10,000. He would trade it for $10,000 worth of advertising. He ended up getting tens of millions of dollars of advertising free in his first year. He was able to fill the boat with paying clients. He was able to buy new boats. And from that strategy... He built a multi-billion dollar company, a multi-billion dollar company. I have helped people buy their employer without putting up a dime. I have helped people buy two or three small businesses in the same field and then put them together where you get economies of scale, meaning each business had a bookkeeper or each business it was a dry cleaner, had a presser and a, and a, and a uh, delivery. But if you put three together, you only need one and you can eliminate three or four of the jobs and end up literally with a whole bigger amount of profit. I have helped people get the rights, like in the United States years ago, I helped a person get the rights to infomercials before they were ever offered in Australia. The people in the United States spent millions of dollars creating infomercials. They spent millions of dollars developing products and producing them, but they only ran the infomercials in the United States. My client went to those people. I guided them. They would get the rights to use their million-dollar investment in an infomercial. They'd get the right to buy the product from the client who already had paid for them, had paid all the manufacturing, who owned them so my client could buy them one at a time for a great price. My client made $25 million in the first year. Now, the stories I'm going to tell, the examples I'm going to give, 
the different uh, pathways I'm going to share in the new models and modules we're going to go through will teach you not just ways to make a lot of money, but ways to start out and build in a very safe, progressive way. The example I give, if you know anything about uh, ships, you'll know what locks are. Panama Canal, the Suez Canal, they have locks. And that means that what ship's trying to come from one ocean to another, it can't just go like that. It has to go through a series of steps to get there. We will work out together over the next few months the best strategy for you to begin with to become a successful entrepreneur, a long-term goal of where you can take your entrepreneurial career, meaning you might start slow. One of the biggest, wealthiest landowners, real estate barons in the United States, started out owning a little restaurant. A man who died just yesterday was the largest and the biggest conglomerate owner in the media. He owned NBC, owned cable companies, and he started out with a teeny, tiny manufacturing company that made men's pants. So the point is, I will not allow you ever again to limit your sense of what is possible over your lifetime as an entrepreneur. I will also teach you how to think very strategically, meaning long-term, but I will teach you how to think very progressively, meaning many people think there's no way I can be a millionaire. There's no way I can have a big, successful business, so they give up. There are absolutely safe, absolutely successful, proven ways to start with one strategy or one business or one activity and either multiply it or use it to grow and gain lots of other ones. You will learn how to accurately and effectively determine the what I call the optimal, the best, the maximum Profit destiny path for you, which means each person is unique and different. You will see that you have all these options and we will evaluate together the benefits, the advantages, the disadvantages, the ease or the complexity so that together we will build you your own unique entrepreneurial business success plan. The plan will not be abstract. By the time you complete this program, you'll know exactly what you're going to do first, second, third, how you're going to do it, where you're going to do it, exactly the steps you're going to use to do it, and if you have any difficulties, how to overcome them. And then you will also build a long-term life strategy that shows you how to take whatever successes you start with and not be satisfied there, but keep taking them higher and higher and higher. And we will use as examples real-life people that I have known. I'm going to teach you how to become a masterful marketer because marketing is the key to really getting people to want to do business with you and not your competitor, getting people to see the value you create. We will teach you how to be a masterful strategist, which means you'll be able to see how to take fullest advantage of opportunities in markets, of gaps in ways none of the other people do it. We will teach you how to be a very effective negotiator because negotiating is how you gain control of situations. We will teach you how to communicate your value in such a powerful way that other companies, other organizations, other key influencers, the media will all want to do business with you without you having to come up with any capital. 
will teach you to add profit centers to other businesses. We will teach you how to find the exact business today that will get you started and get you financially stable. Then we will teach you how to use that business to springboard you to far greater financial success and security. Then we will teach you how to grow your business by developing talent. We will teach you by modeling, by um, applying the same methods, the same techniques, the same strategic um, game plans that many of the thousands of other successful entrepreneurs I have counseled or been counseled by used to grow their success. So for today and for this segment, the most important lesson I need to teach you is that you have within you greatness. It's a greatness that has always existed but probably never been allowed to develop. There are many reasons why. The first reason is probably that no one in your life, be it parents, employer, uh, uh, professors at school, teachers, uh, ministers or priests, no one ever knew how to show you what greatness should look like. And by that I mean there's two ways greatness should be seen. One is how differently you think in your mind, how differently you conduct yourself to others, how differently you look at situations. The other is how more powerfully you communicate and you connect in all of your activities or dealings. By the way, you have the ability immediately to achieve greatness in many elements of your life. First, you can start building your greatness and, and multiplying it as an entrepreneur. But perhaps before that, you want to develop your greatness as a human being so you can have greater character, greater passion, greater compassion, greater appreciation of others and of yourself. You might want to grow your uh, greatness as a husband, wife, if you're married, fiance, if you're engaged, boyfriend, girlfriend, if you've got a boyfriend or girlfriend, or just friend. You have to grow your greatness as a value contributor because that is going to define your ultimate success by seeing life in a different way than anyone else. Most people, when they try to plug into their greatness, fail because they don't understand two things. One, where they are right now on the scale. If this is greatness as an entrepreneur and you're here, you can't be depressed. You have to be excited because you have all this more growth to achieve and with each level of growth you have an exponential level of reward and success but you have to figure out where you are in every category if it's entrepreneurial greatness you're after if you're here and you have to go here you can't do it in one step it's it, you'll fail it's like saying I want to be a pole vaulter and the first time I do it I want to pole vault 25 feet you have to figure out a, a, a safe series of progressions so that every day you're getting closer and closer, but you are growing every day. So in order to do that, you have to first learn the steps that need to be taken to take you from wherever you are right now to wherever you want to be. And it's not pole vaulting. It's not catapulting. It's simple, safe steps that are higher in their success probability than they are in their failures. So everything I do for you, 
everything we talk about is going to be based on me putting greater advantage and greater success probability on you and on your side of doing things and less failure so that you are motivated to have wins, successes, positive experiences that fuel and drive you to very, very excited and enthusiastic going forward. So first thing is we got to plug into your greatness. Second thing, we have to figure out what you need to do to change how you look at life and how you communicate and how people see you. Next, we've got to figure out where the gap is and then the pathways to get to that gap. And then you have to build a plan to progress on that pathway. And then you have to start and commit to doing it in, an, in a systematic, a disciplined, a regular basis. Now, a word of warning, and it's not a negative, it's a, um, it's a joyous problem you will have to, to accept. If any of you can remember back when you were a little child, which you probably can't, your parents had to teach you to walk. They had to teach you to talk. They had to teach you to eat. They had to teach you to use the bathroom. You got taught how to ride a bicycle. When you first started, you were not very good. Your first step, you probably fell over. Your first time trying to eat, you probably put the spoon of oatmeal or rice in your eye. The first time you tried to talk, it might have sounded... The first time you tried to go to the bathroom, probably was uh, very unsuccessful. Well, the first time you will try to apply or uh, implement or execute any and all of the things I teach you, you probably won't be great at it. doesn't mean it won't allow you to reach your greatness. It means that you probably will have to accept that we have to build your comfort, your skill, and your proficiency. That's not a problem because I will engineer, I have engineered into all 